Hello everyone, I wanted to show you in a quick tutorial video how to calibrate your Revo board on the new 14.6 release. There's a number of new calibration options and the calibration has been severely revised so it needs a little bit of explaining. The first new thing is the thermal calibration. The thermal calibration helps the board to automatically correct small drifts that are temperature dependent on the gyroscopes and the accelerometers, as well as, that's very important, the barometer. The barometer helps it to keep its altitude in the altitude hold mode, so it does no longer go up and down when the temperature changes. For the temperature calibration, the board needs to go through a temperature range, so it's best to put it in the freezer for that. For that, you should put it into a freezer baggie and seal it so no moisture can go condense on it when it comes out. So the moisture would condense on the outside of the freezer baggie and not get the electronics on the board moist. That's quite important. So I did it like this. I wrapped it in a freezer baggie with a USB cable attached to it. Then bend it here and put a rubber, rubber string around it so no moisture can get in. It goes into the freezer for about half an hour and then when it gets out I connect it to the GCS and start the temperature calibration, the thermal calibration run, which runs for about 20 minutes until the temperature does no longer change. At that point it will usually be quite warm because this freezer baggie also insulates so it will do the temperature calibration from whatever your freezer is, minus 10 degrees to plus 40 or even higher depending on the outside temperature. That needs to be done once, then applied and saved, and then it will automatically compensate for any temperature drifts during the further calibration steps and also during flight. So that's a good thing to do. It's not mandatory. You can fly without it. It worked so far without it, but it will improve the overall performance. So if you want to do it, do it with the board separated from the frame and first. Now once you have done that, you have to calibrate the remaining uh, sensors and I would always start with the accelerometers. The accelerometer measures the gravity force as well as any other uh, accelerations subjecting the board in flight and it uses the gravity for the calibration. So I have this quad set up and linked over OP-Link telemetry and I'll perform the calibration over, over telemetry. So I'm starting the accelerometer calibration. And it tells me that the home location is not set. I almost forgot about that. You always need to set the home location first before starting the calibration. For that, if you don't have a GPCS or if you have no reception, you can go to the map say set home location enter an altitude for that spot and then in the configuration settings it will appear here with the correct latitude and longitude we can save this and continue with the calibration. Accelerometer calibration is first. It tells us to place the board horizontally and save position. Now for this step it's not so necessary that it's absolutely horizontal, so you don't need a water scale. But for the accelerometer calibration, since it measures accelerations, it's absolutely mandatory that no further accelerations than earth gravity affect the board. So it must be motionless and there must be no vibrations, no nothing. So it's best to not put it on the, your desk if your desk is shaking because you have a big computer in it with a big CPU fan or if your sister is dancing in the other room that's also not so good. Turn down the subwoofer and place it like uh, explained. It only matters which side is facing down for this calibration. So in this case it says place horizontally and save position. So we click save, wait until the slider goes to 100% and it will tell us the next way. So this time it's nose down. This already 
is a little bit tricky on this board because it will obviously not stand like that. That is not a problem. We can lean it against something and even if it's not exactly nose down, as long as it stands and is motionless, this will do. So again, safe position. The next thing is right side down. So right side is this one. Same game again. Safe position and again it's very important that nothing touches it. If something touches it, if it moves, if it wasn't completely stable and twitched, you have to restart the calibration over. Of course only the acceleration part. The next one is upside down. There's six steps in total for all the six sides. Each side faces down exactly once. Nose up. And left side down. That's it, it tells us accelerometer calibration completed successfully, so we can apply and save this. I think the apply button does only show up in the expert mode, so you just click save, that works too. The next one is the, uh, is the magnetometer calibration that I would perform. The magnetometer calibration is different from the accelerometer calibration that once you start it, it keeps collecting magnetometer information until the complete process is complete. So for that, it's most important that no magnetic forces affect the board. So nothing metallic, no electronics, and uh, not even the floor should be anywhere near the board. So obviously the best way to perform magnetometer calibration is like this in the air nicely away from everything. If it moves a little left and right, that doesn't matter. And uh, for the magnetometer calibration, it's not important if it twitches and moves a bit because the holes that it will tell us are just uh, hints that make sure that you go through each orientation that is possible once. So you could even ignore them and just flick the board through all the possible orientations if you can remember them by heart. But it's of course easier if you follow the instructions. So I put it in the air, I start the magnetometer calibration, and it tells us place horizontally, nose pointing north. Now I don't know where north is, but it's actually not important for this one. It's just important that you just keep the uh, orientations the same during the entire process. So I just decide uh, my screen is north, so I put the front to the screen. And now I click save position. The next one is nose down and right side west. So you can see in the picture, this is the front towards you. Save position. The next one is with the bottom towards you and the nose to the left. Save position. Next one is obviously upside down and nose to the right. While I'm doing this, the calibration is actually ongoing. So if I would put it on the floor now, it would get spurious uh, samples and the calibration would probably not be good. So I have to keep it in my hands until I'm finished with it. And I can also not go in near it with anything magnetic. So no screwdrivers, no smartphones, nothing that uh, would bother it. That is nose towards the user and bottom to the left. Safe position. Magnetometer calibration completed successfully. So again, I save this. 
The next one is the board level calibration. The board level calibration makes sure that uh, the quad stays upright even if the board is not mounted completely level on the uh, frame. So that assumes that you can actually place this frame level on the ground. If you can't do that, don't perform it. It's optional. With it, it just says when I start it, place horizontally in a safe position, which I do. It now collects accelerometer data again, so it must not be touched during this. And now it tells me to turn it around. So it stays right side up, but the other way around. Now if the board is tilted in any way, it will now be tilted the other way. So it can tell how much it's tilted. I again say safe position. That's it. That was the board level calibration. Again, that is not absolutely mandatory and if, if your frame is not possible then you can skip it. But it might mean that uh, in hovering you might need a little bit of stick input to compensate for the tilt that the board has. Now the gyro bias calibration is also interesting. The gyroscope's zero point is sometimes a little bit shifted and that can be compensated on the fly by the filters we are running, but it helps them immediately when we start with a better zero point. For that, it does a similar thing like for the board level calibration, but for the, for the gyros. So they will be zeroed when I click start, and again, the quad must not be moved. That was it. Jars about calibration completed successfully. We save this. And the board should now be calibrated. Now there's one important new thing that is necessary for any autonomous operation. So if you have position hold, if you have return to base or anything where the quad or your fixed wing needs to fly itself, it's exactly the same for fixed wing, then you need to change the fusion algorithm that is under settings, you have attitude estimation algorithm and the default is complementary. Complementary is the same algorithm that runs on Copter Control and Copter Control 3D and that is not able to, uh, to navigate. So for navigation you need either complementary plus Mac plus GPS Outdoor but that is not the best option. It uh, will actually not work reliably on fixed wing and that might help position less good than the better option. The INS option is the better, that is an extended Kalman filter. I'm not selecting outdoor now because I don't have a GPS reception here and that won't not initialize before it has a GPS lock. So I'm selecting indoor and when I apply this, I save it too, then on the primary flight display, the artificial horizon is now fed from the EKF. What you can see here in the alarms is that it has actually not initialized yet because it has magnetometer sensors feeding it wrong data that uh, don't match the previous calibration that we did. This is most likely because the board is standing on the floor. So if I lift it up to where I did the calibration, it should then go green and start the, start the sensor correctly.